Um, we wanted to explore the heart today, kind of a part two of last conversation where we explored the nafs in the Islamic paradigm. We wanted to offer some thoughts on the heart. Now, these things are kind of a work in progress. Um, we'll be the first to admit that these things are very nuanced, very complex, but we'd like to be able just to open this up and begin to explore using our, our understanding of the tradition, um, especially Sheikh Idris, but also of the latest neuroscience, of our clinical work, um, so on and so forth, and how we can begin to merge these together, inshallah ta'ala. So when we talk about the heart, you know, kind of last time we talked about the nafs, talked about uh, the jism and the ruh, kind of as the main tripartite um, constitution of man, we come up with a dilemma because we have these other concepts of qalb, of aql, of sir, and all these other things. And where do those fall in that three-partite conception? And this is where I think um, a new kind of perhaps uh, approach can can be obtained and kind of reframing these in a new way because in the past, we've kind of seen them all as like one thing. We see the nafs and the qalb and the ruh and the aqid kind of in the same same vein, um, but also in some way unrooted, I think. Also, like from the body, for example, from the relational apparatus that we have, um, and so we want to be able to explore this, inshallah ta'ala, in a way that is meaningful and is interesting, I think, for us, inshallah ta'ala. So to begin, Sheikh Idris, I'm curious, how do you make sense of the qalb? What is your kind of, um, you know, foundational starting place when you start to think about the qalb in relation to the nafs and the body and everything else we've been talking about? Yeah. I think first and foremost, I think that conversation we had last week is really important because it depends how you conceptualize the nafs. So you and myself, um, we were sort of differing on, um, is do we, you know, when we say mind, body and soul, um, the mind, is it the nafs or is it the qalb, is it? And I think when I, I'm taking a specific focus of the nafs, the body being included in the nafs, which traditionally I don't think, I mean, that definitely, they understood that the nafs is the entirety, um, but there was definitely a, a separation between, um, usually they're not referring to the body when they say the nafs. So I'm looking at it in a more holistic way. And so it depends how you sort of um, um, enter this topic, to be honest. Yeah. And so you will get differences about it, depending on your concept, what you're really conceptualizing when you're talking about these things. But I just find framing the nafs in this day and age as part of like we're talking about the body and we're talking about sort of our more corporal or material substance of ourself is a lot easier because um, traditionally a lot of the time the nafs would be referred to that thing that is sort of base um, and need and uh, it needs to be fought and mm. I think in our day and age we have to be really careful the way we, um, with that sort of understanding because it can lead into personal abuse, um, mm -hmm. you abusing the body mm -hmm. and abusing your psyche. So with that in mind, I'm, as if I say the nafs, I'm referring to the body as well when I speak to the nafs, then I see the qalb as the capacity within us to sort of um, determine things, which from a modern perspective, we're talking about the mind, but that's only one aspect of the qalb um, because this is the difficult thing here is the qalb and the aql, there's this sort of confusion about are they two separate entities or is the aql the capacity within the qalb, the heart itself? Mm -hmm. And that's how I like to see it. I find it a lot easier to conceptualize it like that, that the, uh, the aql, the intellect, is the light that is produced from the qalb, that, it's, mm -hmm. that it reaches out in order to understand things and determine things. Yeah. And so from a linguistic point of view, anyway, I think it's really important we linguistically ground these things is that the qalb fundamentally means to flip something. Many Turn people over. are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Now, it, the, 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 and I'm not dismissing either meanings because they have validity, but uh, from a Quranic perspective, um, the qalb is the capacity, it's the, the faculty within us that can flip things over and analyze them. 
Mm. Um, there is another way of looking at the heart turns and changes its states, but I, I prefer to focus more on this capacity that the heart is the thing that flips, analyzes and assesses things. Mm. Um, and obviously that is, I think that's it. from a modern materialistic perspective, they're looking at that's the mind um, or in traditional terminology, the soul as we, you know, as George McCary speaks about in the, mm -hmm. the soul machine, soul machine. Mm -hmm. is that traditionally the mind was a soul. And now, but it's obviously when we look at it, the qalb, um, the 